Hello, and today we are covering Hess Corporation, ticker HES. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. The company has a market cap of $39.9 billion, enterprise value of $46.2 billion. So you can see there's about $6 billion in net debt on this business. That's about 15% of the overall enterprise value. A decent amount of debt, but not a huge amount. The oil, it is in the oil, gas, and consumable fuels industry. So Hess Corporation on the business description says it is an exploration and production company. This is a key phrase here because the oil and gas industry has many different types of companies, but exploration production specifically means the companies that are going out, finding the oil and producing it. So this is the exploring, develop, producing, purchasing, transporting, and selling crude oil. Natural gas liquids and natural gas. So key point here is you have oil, natural gas liquids, and natural gas. Those are the three important segments. So it's not just oil. It's also the natural gas size. They have two segments, exploration production and midstream. Midstream can include some of the transportation aspects and processing aspects of the oil so it's not just the exploration and production so they are primarily in the u.s guana malaysia thailand and malaysia so key points here is of course u.s um gulf of mexico and then guana knowing that you have a little bit outside the u.s as well so they gather compress um, process natural gas fractioning and gl so again gathering transportation stuff like that and then um they provide water handling services in the back and shale and other areas of north dakota so that gives you a little bit of phrase of where they are but key is they are producing natural gas company so the beta of 1.58 means it's about 58 percent more volatile than the average s&p 500 that is significant because the higher the beta the more volatile the stock is compared to the average s&p 500 stock and typically i've seen that the higher volatility a stock is the more volatile the underlying business that is one sign to me of it could be a relatively low quality business as we go down to the return on invested capital chart you can see further evidence of that as well although they had many years here where they were profitable from 2003 to 2014 it looks like they had 11 straight years of profitability they then had one two three four five six years of losses in a row during the time frame from 2015 to 2020 now, this was a particularly bad time in the oil and gas industry, but this company apparently did quite poorly. Anytime you have six years in a row of losses, that's really bad because it means that produces the potential for bankruptcy and any sort of catastrophic risk like that is a major concern to me. It can also offset many years of profits that you see here. So you're losing many years of profits. It makes it very hard to predict the future as well. Because when I sit here and say, okay, I'm profitable in this year, 2022, I had a 12% return on invested capital. That's a really good number. But can I predict that in the future? It's really hard to say because you're bouncing around a lot, even when you're making a profit. And then I know the recent history involved many years of losses. Now, if you don't have those losses in the future, you could do quite well. But of course, it's hard to predict. These 10-year median returns, of course, being negative 3.2% return on equity, negative 1.8% return on invested capital. Anytime you have a 10-year average of losses, that's a major red flag for me. So for that reason alone, it would be instantly pushed down from a high quality business to an average or low quality business. Now, what's interesting is that the valuation ratio is still quite high. You're trading at a PE of 19.7, which is basically a PE of 20. So when you're paying a PE of 20 for a stock that has returns like this, I don't understand it. It doesn't make a lot of sense why that is. So the first thing is we need to check those numbers against what it is, see if it's being distorted at all. You see the close here of $130 per share, um, $6.77 EPS in 2022. So, you know, that kind of fits with the PE of 20 there, but you see that they don't have a history of earning a lot more than that. They did earn more than that in 2013 and 2014. So you have to go back all the way to 2013 to really get to a number where this would make sense because... If we say their true earnings power is something like $14 or $15, now we can say they're trading in a single digit PE. That could be really attractive. The problem is they haven't earned that since 2013. And in fact, a lot of six of those years, of course, were losses. So not only are you paying a multiple of 20, you're paying a multiple of 20 on peak earnings from the last eight years. That is a concern for me. Um, so I'm instantly thinking not only is this, hey, maybe a lower quality business this is also relatively high price. So why would we be something be interested in here? Um, 
let's look at the Kagers on growth. You can see also they're not growing. Revenue is negative 0.8%. You began at 11.9 billion, you end 11.3 billion. Not only that, as you drop significantly during this time frame, you reached a low of 4.6 billion, 4.7 billion in revenue from a high of 11.9 billion in revenue. That's a massive volatility on your revenue side and is a key explanation of why they would go through losing so much money. Um, their assets declining is actually a good sign um, because you know if you're going to have a struggling business if you can find a way to reduce your assets that is one thing you could do it does say the eps is growing but i don't yet see that in the numbers one other key thing that's really concerning here is you actually had two years of negative gross profit losses so it's not that you just had a loss in the bottom line you had a loss on the gross profit line which means that's just from cost of goods sold exceeding your revenue um which when you're in a commodity business is something that can happen. It's one reason you might want to avoid commodity businesses. Something else that's interesting to me though is that they are paying dividends every year. So they've paid a dividend every single year for the last 10 years. Um, it's not a big dividend yield, you know, a dollar on 130, you know, you're talking about 1% type dividend yield. Um, but they, they're confident enough in their business that they continued to pay dividends during these losses, which is a little weird, honestly. I would have probably preferred them to cut the dividend and focus on their business, but I guess they, they felt confident in the underlying business enough to keep doing that. Overall here, a lot of concerns so far, but there might be some more we can learn in the income statement balance sheet. So um, we're going to go to that next, but don't, before I do, hit that like button. If you're enjoying this video, you don't the like doesn't mean you're enjoying the stock, but if you're learning something, if you're finding something new, please hit that like button, consider becoming a subscriber. Let's go to this income statement. Of course, you can see on the income statement when that cost of goods sold exceeded the revenue here for those two years, and that's a big concern of why they had that negative gross profit line. One of the things you'd want to see, and you do see, they cut the SG&A during these tough times. So they, that is you know, good management of their overall expenses. Um, but the SG&A has gone up significantly despite the fact that they're not improving their gross profits. So that is another concern, is you have a very high SG&A now, which means that their you know, true profitability is much worse than it was a decade ago. I am a little surprised that their shares outstanding is down across the decade. They've retired about 10% of their shares outstanding. That's gonna give like a 1% per year boost to your EPS over the course of the decade. So you do see that, and that is a nice sign to see. But, you know, instead of spending this money on share buybacks, spend the money trying to figure out how to solve your underlying business. The problem is, is their product is commodity. When you're selling a commodity like natural gas or oil, you don't have control of your price. That puts a limit on the ability that you have to control your underlying business. Let's go to balance sheet. Let's see. Accounts receivable down. Cash is up. So, you know, maybe a little bit more liquid than you used to be. PP&E is down. You know, they, they had that decline of like 6.7% per year in, PEEP in assets. And so you do like to see that they've reduced their overall plant equipment from $28 billion to $15 billion. The lower asset intensive, intensivity means that their returns on invested capital in the future could be better than they were in the past because now they've reduced their amount of assets. However, if the lower assets mean that their ability to actually earn a profit is lower, that's not good. But so you need to measure those two against each other. But if they could somehow return to the previous level of profitability with half the assets, that would actually be a really good way of managing your capital. So the fact that they drew down their capital over time, they weren't reinvesting, is something that you see across a lot of these oil and gas companies. And so it is one bull case for the future is that companies haven't been investing as much in this industry, so perhaps in the future they could get better returns. You can see that their debt is up about a billion dollars over the course of a decade. It's never great to see your debt higher at the beginning of the deck at the end of the decade than the beginning when your earnings are actually lower. Um, but overall, it looks like they've cut down their liabilities as well. A lot of that on current liabilities, they've they've kind of reduced some of their um, working capital. So that's good capital management on that side. One thing you can see is this retained earnings. You began the decade with 17 billion in retained earnings. You end it with 1.4. Um, those losses really hurt the overall retained earnings picture for this business. Now, of course, they had some buybacks occur, which I think we're going to see in the cash flow statement that could lead to that as well and reduce those retained earnings. Um, but but certainly the losses are playing a key role in there. Um, of course, 
One of the things that's going to help the net income compared to the cash flow from operations is that the depreciation is coming down. It's coming down because you have fewer assets. So that's actually, again, a good sign for how they're managing their working capital. Um, they've been reducing their reinvestment. You see they were reinvesting $6 billion a year in PP&E at the beginning of the decade. They're down to about $2.7 billion, $3 billion this time to that could sort of cut of course their reinvestment in half again these are good signs for how you'd want to manage a business that's really struggling with profitability so management is making good decisions but this is a really hard industry and you need to be aware of that if you're an investor you do see that they're paying these dividends they have some buybacks but they aren't consistent year to year so i wouldn't really want to be predicting that in the future um, because you don't really know what their philosophy is around that overall my assessment here for Hess Corporation is similar to a lot of exploration companies for oil and gas is this is a very tough industry. It looks like they have a skilled management team who's making some of the right decisions to improve the overall performance in the long term. But shareholders really haven't seen the benefit of that yet because of how hard it is for them to control their revenue. It's driven heavily by the oil prices, the natural gas price, and they don't control that. That's a market price. And yet their costs that they do control, they're working on containing. So management's doing what looks like potentially a really good job. The problem is just it's a tough industry. And for me, I don't want to own tough industries. So for that reason, I'm going to pass on Hess Corporation. If you find this interesting though, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I have all the stocks that I do like in the watch list playlist linked at the end of this video. I hope you'll check that out. I think there's some really great videos there. And if you want to learn to use this software that I'm using, the link to quickfs.net, my affiliate link is the first link in the description below. I hope you'll check that out. It's a great way to support the channel. You can sign up for a free or paid account through that link. And that would really help me out. Thank you for listening. Until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.